Just doing a little reading here to get caught up. We're going to talk about uh, a number of things this hour. Dana Dernford is standing by. Uh, Yoshi is on the road. We're going to try and bring you up to date on uh, the radiation issue and how it's sinking ever deeper into our entire infrastructure here. Not talking about bridges and airports and schools. We're talking about the soil, the water, and the air, and the things we depend upon for a reasonable lifestyle, i.e. food. Uh, now, here's a here's a, a story I just came across. i got to read a little of this. This is interesting. Alex Jones' lawyer says his client is just playing a character in his radio shows as a conspiracy theorist's ex-wife demands custody of children from her unstable husband. She's concerned about him. She says the host is unstable and that his kids watch him broadcast from home. And she's worried that the threat against Schiff constitutes a felony. Jones walked back the threat on his show saying it was just tongue-in-cheek. She wants custody of their three kids, age 9 to 14, whom he's had since 2015. This is quite a sad soap opera. He's trying to get custody of the three kids. He's playing a character, his attorney Randall Wilhite said at a recent pre-trial hearing. Oh, gee, and all his fans thought he was sincere. Well, there's one thing. Let me stop this. There's one thing I can say about Alex Jones. I don't know of much, if anything, he has said about Fukushima, radiation, the constant exposure to low-level radioactivity in these formerly United States, whether he be playing a performance character or not. Uh, he has had an opportunity like we have, and we've done this for you for over six years now, to bring the truth to you. And Dana Dernford is standing by up in British Columbia. Hello, Dana. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. How are I you? I didn't know that. I didn't know that story. So. But. Yeah. Well, it's part Alex, of the landscape. Alex, um, Alex covered Fukushima and the crew extremely well, man. The first couple of months, uh, even the first four months, five months, hardcore. But a couple of years later, they what's they what's Fukushima? Oh, I know. Yeah, a couple, I, yeah uh, that's fact. He got they he were got really uh, good too, man. The first the first few months. He got talked to. First week, it was crazy good. Yeah. I got so much of what they produced. It was like spot on. When you look back six years later, it was spot on, man. I wish they he were had like, kept it up. They were like me on Overdrive. Yeah. And you, right? They were like hardcore. And then all of a sudden, they couldn't find any here. They had a whole new crew working for them. And I'm actually putting together a whole um, presentation on it. Because I'm sick of it. And so he's selling iodine. Um, Potassium iodide. Iodate. Yeah. Right. And uh, this is based upon Fukushima, though. And the, the narrative, I've covered some of it before, but I'm uh-huh. going to do a whole thing on it, yeah. Paul Joseph Watson uh, yeah. covered a whole and Watson spot is, on too, man. Wat, Watson has uh, really distinguished himself. In the beginning, he was kind of a. Yeah, I, want, I don't want to say flake, because he's smart. He's a smart guy, but he has really come forward and produced some uh, extraordinary videos telling telling the truth. So I salute that. On some I, sides, but he's... I had uh, him on the program here. He, has come out, he hasn't come out about Fukushima lately in the last no, couple no, of years. No, 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 that's the point. None all. of them are. Uh, they and talk it. about radium and radon and stuff like that. Ah, and, it's all and misdirection. It. And misdirection. I really disrespect people who do that. Yeah, It's misdirection. It's... it's uh, Steering us away from from reality, which is we are being literally exposed 24-7, low dose, but it adds up, folks. It doesn't go away. So, yeah, and that's, that's very true. I remember very well what was going on in the beginning, but it all went away. It just went away. Didn't go Not away really here. I got it in my archives. So kind of, yeah, yeah. It's going to come back and haunt somebody, I can assure you. <laughs> yeah. Well, CDC... Uh, 
like they, like they covered the jet streams, they covered the ocean currents, they covered the meltdowns, they covered Reactor 3 really well. Uh huh. And uh, they were the go to people uh, originally. There was a lot of people out there looking for street creds right away that uh, were really articulating type, uh, brought in some big hitters, and then they turned out to be sellouts shortly after. And there was just this whole pandering thing going on with the industry. And you've seen, really seen their reach and their power and their influences show up as you look, especially when you go back. We live in this world now where, like before it was on TV, you never see it again. Now it's all over the internet, it's stashed here, stashed here, it's on hard drives, it shows up, it keeps popping back up. And so now we see, we can look up and look at a site, any site, and see their narrative for the last six years and dissect that and show whether they're honest or genuine or sincere or just clumsy or malicious. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is like, um, we've never seen that in the history of humans on this mm. planet before in any kind of capacity close to it. It's an extremely weird time, to, uh, useful time to be alive and, and active. Yeah, I agree. Yes, indeed. Uh, we are now six plus years away and I don't know how, how we are going to come up with a hard science. You've done so, so much work, but how do we get past the blockade that has been thrown up in your face and my face by organized science that knows damn good and well what's going on here. Now we have this thing going on in, in Korea with three nuclear aircraft carrier task forces going up there. And those nuclear carriers, as you know, have on board a number of nuclear warheads that they can use to send off with their uh, either missiles or their jets and drop them. They're tactical. Um, I don't know. If, if, if somebody decides to make an issue of these aircraft carriers, uh, i.e. Uh, sink one or two of them and then use it as a false flag to generate a full-blown attack on North Korea, we won't know for sure who sinks them. We, we're not there. We can't prove it. But we can make a pretty good guess that there's something fishy going on if we watch the situation carefully and closely and pay attention, and which is what we have to do. Can't, we can't rely on the media to tell us anything that's true. It won't happen. So, well, what do you I think? Mean, they, can lay, they, they can light it up anytime they want. There's nothing we can do about it. Right. We're kind of, we're, we're like, we're not in a position. If they light up with nuclear, we will never know whether it was staged or real. Uh, well, like Kim Jong-un, Right now, he wasn't even born when all this started. And all countries were basically dictators in the 1950s and 60s anyway. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there's um, – people might say that uh, Roosevelt wanted to go to Japan, but he had to wait for Pearl Harbor. And people <laughs> will tell you that President Wilson wanted uh, to go to war in Germany, but he had to wait for the Lusitania and mm -hmm. that – Johnson had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin to get into Vietnam or McKinley uh, war with Spain over the, the main, the battleship sinking of the main. These were all catalysts, the same as uh, Fort Sumter. You know, these were changing moments in history. And all of these were based upon staged events. That's these right. are proven now. Yeah. yeah. And Patrick Kloss, and you hear him bragging about it at the Washington Institute, uh, which is – a think tank for the military industrial complex and it's uh, basically an Israeli think tank really which is most of them are a lead aligned to that you got but, it yeah. yeah no that's the biggest influence because of the Christian theology Bible you know Australian quake uh, rescuers were hit by radiation about 50 kilometers away from Fukushima Daiichi to just to rescue workers they had to leave because there was so much radiation yeah. But uh, nuclear physicists right away had in May of 2011 had come out talking about how MOX fuel will drop on the U.S. unless the wind does something strange. You know, they keep the talking big, about the, the spent fuel pools uh, that are up in the air exist. that are going to blow up if the building they falls over or whatever. Yeah, They're I've gone. They don't I've exist. That. I've been scooping it all week. And they're still talking about, yeah, uh, fuel pools, which in any way you don't understand it, there's roughly a couple of decades of reactor cores, and they change right. the reactor cores every 12 months, uh, say two-thirds or four-fifths of the reactor core we pulled out, put into storage pools where it'll remain for decades. And right. these were at the top of the building for anybody who's not familiar. 
And um, this is multiple reactors, one building going off. And so this is an incredible catastrophic. Just this one little site, 30 million one-ton bags are already yeah. picked up from it. That's just a, that's just so they can uh, fake safety and move people into an area. See, you know, maybe they don't want to support them, but they got no right to move people back in, you know? Why is the onus, why would they even consider it? Because and, and right they don't care. That. Their whole yeah, right. approach is to ignore and completely yeah. distance themselves from reality. And it's just the same puke machines all the time with this Frederick. Just and you can trace them all back to the just they're all nuclear, they're all crazy. Uh totally out it's like every pro nuclear is totally batched just crazy where you can't reason or you can't have a conversation with them, whatever. Yeah. The bananas, potato chips and walking and stones <laughs> and commentations. And uh -huh. it's really uh, I mean I mean my goodness, there must be a lie out there uh, to to utilize something like that, you would hope, but apparently not. Uh, <laughs> I got six gag orders. I'm in, going to be in the courtroom tomorrow. I'll try to get some of these um, conditions lifted. And You're under. Uh, it's. I thought it was three. It's six. Well, it's six. Well, it's th yeah. There's three people and three organizations that I can't talk about. I got a gag order, on. so I can't uh. bring up any of those corporations or the three individuals uh -huh, uh -huh. and so like yeah so six and then you have all these other conditions I um, mean can't pick dandelion unless I got the boat with me can't carry a knife around unless I got the boat basically and so that's <laughs> you can't go get dandelion unless you got your boat with you but I can like um, wow. I can have a drill I said I can have a drill with me and a hammer he said yeah so I can't have a knife okay unless I got the boat right so mm-hmm mm -hmm. Fill the boat up yesterday, and we can put new lights on it. And blah blah blah. What, what are you? Uh, what, what are you planning money. for for this spring and right. summer? Well, this is the last one, man. All the whales are emaciated. The birds are all dead or gone, emaciated, starving uh -huh. to death. All uh -huh. the salmon are missing, and they starved to death too. They were emaciated. It's like no, they birds. migrated. I'm sorry, they migrated inland. Yeah, you this gallows it. laugh. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, I need to go out and live stream. Now we got. Now, like, see, every year technology doubles and triples, right? And so now, finally, the technology is here that even someone like me can stream extremely high-quality live uh, feed. Yeah. And, yeah, I just ordered a new camera. A proper are we, we going to have the ability to, to carry your live video. feed? Can we? Yeah, can we... yeah. it's going to be something. It's really going to be good. something. All good. I mean, I mean, we're talking real quality live -in. We're yeah. talking real quality live stream, and so the low, low tides will do. I think we're going to have, like, you know, uh, people can pick where they want me to go and live stream too, right? That kind of what a trip. What a kick. We're That's going to totally be great. Open. We'll go yeah. wherever. and Because we got all equipment, basic equipment by far at this stage, and we're very seasoned. And we need to do something to really – we need to fight with everything we got, and I don't know what else to do. I think that will finally – because it's such high quality available. Sure. Uh, that the, the, the very, the, just showing that whole coastline naked and where all the salmon boats are too, where there's no birds there anywhere to be seen. You get like 200 boats in this one spot and there's no birds anywhere. And it's, but it's going to be super high quality, uh, indistinguishable from TV. And I got all that nailed down now. It's not like it was last year or the year before. We were still difficult. Now the technology has finally broke through. And the equipment I got coming, I guess the stupid amount of equipment, but the cameras that are coming are just spectacular. The wow, you're going to have somebody on board with you to help set the shots up and all that? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you have to. I, no, it's going to be a high ball operation uh, when we go out and do it. So I'll be able to put a window up and we'll just have it yeah, streaming there at so. any time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very nice. Uh, like you say, four hours a day at least of streaming mm -hmm. for Otoid Zone. Wow, terrific. And Yeah, so it's going to be uh, something to look forward, I think. And because technology has changed dramatically. Uh, but I'll be able to feed the drone out live, and I'll be able to feed the underwater camera out live also at the same time. And I and I do have the equipment and the horsepower to pull that off. And so it's technically going to be really, this is the year for it. And we can't change the ocean. We can't change the fact of what happened. We can change the future, though. We can give people hope. We can, like, if the planet wakes up, we'll come up with solutions. But if the planet is asleep, there's only a handful of people. 
Great people, China's the people loose. don't even know the spent fuel pools right. don't exist right. anymore, for right. God's sakes. Come that on. law is going to blow. Right? They've they done it to themselves with those laws. They really buried themselves. They can't get away from those laws, and, and they got to keep telling it. And the more they tell it, the more preposterous, uh, more ridiculous it sounds, and the more people lashing at them now. The six do you have to, was, Dana, excuse me, do you have still photos of the, the uh, plants today now showing where the spent fuel pools used to be with a big I, arrow I just before really and after stuff with that yeah well if yeah, you like want to I send it down thousand. i'll post it i mean that's just crazy yeah i got it's like for sure there's no it seemed uh like you say the nuclear scientists out there that have spoken out and said the fuel pools are there that's got kind of, all these uh, academics and medias this is really going to blow up in their face this year it's just because we have also so many deaths the way I see it, so many mm-hmm. so many die-offs. And you're going to see a collapse. We're seeing a collapse right now, the whole coastline of all the industries. And, so tell uh, us more. Wait, wait, wait. Tell us more. Which industries, well, we, who, well, we, and where? Like, uh, it seems to me that the whole coastline of North America, Americans and Canadians, are going to do without salmon, for starters. The herring anchovies, the squid, the sardines have all flopped a couple years in a row. The birds have all died off. Fishermen are going out and being skunked. You're starting to see everybody selling licenses and boats. Now, still not understanding. There's still so many people, like you say, the majority of people still totally in the dark. But they're, they're not going to stay in the dark any longer. You can't hide it any longer. And we said that last year for, you know, because no one expected an accident to have these catastrophic effects. No one expected it to happen, you know, the results to be so die off to be so wide and so very where everything starves to death. yeah that's right like i i have to steer it in the face all the time because i've done the whole coastline i have all the documentation of the coastline i do it five days a week hardcore and to me see i i i can't get away from it right you know i'm like the guy who i don't know how you would put it i went to the dark side and seen the dark side nobody's ever in my area has ever seen it before and you come back and you tell them what it's like and they're like they can't wrap their mind around it but slowly it starts to sink in and permeate and you don't see um, you, you don't see anything new showing up you just see the same apologies over and over and over for six years right they're, they're screeching no don't look there's nothing to be looking at don't the look don't worry be happy nothing to Ac- worry academics about. are yeah academics are speaking of the olympics um, are coming don't worry yeah how is that going to play out right you can't go anywhere near this place because see the big law is where people talk about millisieverts and everybody falls for it and microsieverts that's not how you measure fukushima radiation we're talking about atomic decays and so a microsieber is 150 uh, counts per minute, say. Uh, but 150 counts per minute is vicious. This is vicious numbers. And we've seen these numbers minimum right across uh, North America. And we've seen the numbers coming in at a couple of hundred million beckles and liters of rainwater. And I mean, my goodness, uh, even nuclear testing wouldn't have brought those types of numbers that we know about anyway. Right. And, and then to see the insect world disappear and the microscopic world and see just the worst nightmare of everything starving to death. How can a whale, like a killer whale, starve to death? How can tens of thousands of seals and sea lions starve to death? And when you're you you know when you're someone like myself or yourself who, who really went in deep on this subject, you can see it. But to the average person, uh, I can't blame them for not wanting to understand it, but there's no way to – you know, they're, they're, they're so savage out there now in the media. They make fun of the death of the ocean. They make it seem like that's to be expected. And they keep trying to go with this global warming. Now, narrative. what is the deal with people now? There's a, there's a strange fatalistic acceptance about Fukushima. They don't even want to know about it. There's a strange fatalistic acceptance about World War III. Oh, well, it, it's going to happen. There's no panic. They're not. They're not showing anxiety. They're not out in the streets yelling and demanding that Trump pull back the dogs. They don't get it. I don't understand this. It's. It must be some kind of mass mind control, Dana, that's being disseminated through the cell phone tower system, which covers every square inch of this country virtually, and can certainly dominate and put into the minds of over 300 million Americans any idea or thought process or a mood or attitude that they want to. 
and they're doing that. Right. And so if it's usually AP and writers come out with the story and then you'll see the exact same picture and the same headline and the yeah. same uh, author show up. Uh, in Canada, 1600 medias will immediately parrot it and regurgitate that exactly same story. So everybody gets the same picture, everybody gets the same narrative. And that's good enough for most people who don't want to read it. They just want to read the headline. And the headline is always, you know, pro this, pro that. And meant to excite people into one direction. And then there's the people that are really hooked onto uh, Fox and CNN and these uh, just despicable commentating. Uh, these are commentators, but they're war machines. And so that narrative shows up everywhere and you can't have a conversation. And so I gave up on it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I, like I say, like you, I haven't watched TV now in 20 years or something. I haven't had one. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't. Like I sometimes I, I was talking earlier tonight where I should hold just, Dana. Hold on right there. We please? well, that's a good place to pause. I have to do a break here. We'll come right back. Uh, yeah, I haven't watched TV in 20, uh, 28 years. I haven't spent time with it. No, no, no. But I survived somehow. Okay, let's get right back to Dana Dern for this third hour on a, a Monday night which is always the case here. The MSNBC staff uh, told a host back in August of 2011 to stop talking about Fukushima, about people evacuating because of Fukushima. These were, um, there was a study of 360 atoms in North America, radioactive sulfur, uh, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, people have probably heard me talking about many times, from yes. spraying salt water, inhaled by Californians after Fukushima. That was How many was it? How many again? 360 radioactive sulfur atoms. And so you only need one to get a cancer down the road. And that was uh, per cancer, person, per capita? Per person per day, yeah, roughly. And it was roughly... Um, oh. I can't remember what the number was off the top of my head now. Uh, 1,600 or 1,500 uh, sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from Fukushima per cubic meter of air at the same time. This was uh, two different studies. That's ungodly. That's, that's horrible. Yeah. For the males, it concentrates in the testicles. And so that's why you see the sperm count go right down. Uh, CDC uh, had launched a zombie apocalypse right back at that same time, May the 20th, uh, 2011. Hmm. And that was uh, Vancouver Sun was talking about it. U.S. Mm -hmm. officials turned the zombie apocalypse to promote emergency preparedness was based upon Fukushima. Um, you know, there was another interesting one where Obama was told by Kan, uh, K-A-N, who was the prime minister at the time of Japan, that the helicopters failed the water drop was a success. And, and Obama had come out and said he had complete confidence that they had it under control. And Hillary had uh, allowed oh, God. food to come in without checking it for the first couple of years. And then all of a sudden, they banned it from 14 prefectures right after a couple of years. But the first couple of years, they let all this highly radioactive stuff that was banned in Japan, they shipped it over here. Uh, so they murdered you big time. That's why Hillary was freaking out so hard when she didn't win. They were going to do us big time. And they probably did, who knows, but uh, uh -huh. her crew was going to do, do the job in a uh -huh. real bad way. Uh-huh, yeah. But uh, you had New York uh, Magazine came out um, in June, uh, July, talking about how the backup generators were working to cool the nuclear reactors. These were incredible deceptions that uh, huh. killed a lot of people. Like iodine-131, which only had an eight-day half-life, was found in the sewage in Philadelphia and to the point where it was contaminating all the sewage, right? Yep. Uh, but this was this was many places along the coastline we've seen. But Philadelphia happens to stand out. And so it meant in July, uh, late July, that even then there was a chain reaction going off in America. Everything comes straight across in three or four days. And so the apologists will come out and say it takes a couple of years for it to get here. But they're talking about the ocean. But the ocean gets here in 45 days at five miles per hour, it travels fast than that, faster than that. The Kurosha carries it across in 45 days, 24 hours a day, five so miles 12, an hour. Uh, 12 knots an hour, I think. Yeah, right. at some spots, yeah. Yeah, for a long stretch, a couple of thousand miles. Mm -hmm. Right, and so there's just, all I'm trying to just show people is overwhelming evidence and that how all these uh, companies and corporations and go-to organizations, they sold us out and, and they, they, they murdered us uh, in a slow kill. 
you know, to turn the heat up slowly, so to speak. Uh, that was shocking betrayal. And a lot of these people, like the head of the P- EPA uh, watch at the time for Radiation uh-huh. Watch was promoted by Obama up to the head of uh, the air, land, and sea, and water. I can't remember what it was for the Americans. But it was really shocking that here was the person who done the cover-up gets promoted by Obama. Um, like California, right, there's, you know, it was a drought going on. They had big rains right after Fukushima and Monia for the next couple of weeks, right? Big, right. huge rains. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so rain is your biggest enemy. It, it rains out. Now, a single plume would go up into the atmosphere. It could take 10 years to rain out. This thing never stopped kicking it out. And the numbers that it kicked out originally would, uh, like we started to show off, talking about multiple reactor cores at the top of the buildings. Right. When that blew up and caught fire, um, this was really lethal stuff. Uh, people in the Fukushima prefecture were uh, having their hair stripped from their body and were puking uncontrollably in the streets. I mean, there's one street in Fukushima where over the last couple of years, there's over seven people dropped dead. And just just one shopping street in the Fukushima <laughs> Prefecture, not too far from where they're going to have the Olympics. But I mean, what's the odds of seven people dying on one street within a couple of year period? Um, you know, well, not in a this this the whole Olympics thing. You just put your finger on it. I uh, I don't understand how anyone who knows what's going on there can actually go it, as a tourist or an athlete. You just can't. I don't think it's going to happen. So they're going to have a war or something, I guess. But uh, maybe right, which is, this is what you want in North Korea. Well, why not go pick on a, somebody that can fight back, you know? Why not go <laughs> pick on Russia who can fight back? Why are you going to mm-hmm. pick on this little country where you're going to light up Seoul, South Korea? Um, and, I mean, it's been said they can fire something like 11 million rounds a day or something from North Korea. And they got North Korea, South Korea is right there. If the Americans strike them or Russia or China strike anybody, then... You know, tens of millions of people are going to get evaporated in that area. Right. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, if no matter who it is, if you keep someone locked up for 50 years, Kim Jong il says he's going to cause chaos, but America does. America got millions of oh, millions, millions, millions of refugee camps. Yeah. It's not, they they yeah. could false flag him so fast, Dana. It's not yeah. even funny. They, right. So he's good. You got to have a boogeyman, right? 10,000. Lots of them. 10,000 Bashar Hamas. al-Assad, uh, Rouhani in, in, in Iran, right. uh, the eastern uh, right. in free Ukraine and the eastern part of the country there. They got boogie. They got Vladimir Putin on the eastern European border with Russia. They got, they got it all. Say. They got it all. Russia was contaminated, that northern Russia. Yes, it was. Or, well, eastern Russia, I guess northeastern. Biggest country in the, in the world, by the way. heavily by Fukushima. Land mass. China was. So, North Korea was contaminated heavily by Fukushima. Mm-hmm. So Korea and China, because they're all on the Sea of Japan, right? And Japan yep. itself. Yep, yep, yep. And then Philippines was uh, hard hit. And it got hard hit by those typhoons that were hitting 235 miles per hour. My goodness, you know, 235 mm-hmm. miles an hour... What just happened in Australia was probably the most frightening thing I've ever seen. There's people there, Jeff, where the winds got down to 100 miles an hour and they thought it was pretty good. But <laughs> they, they went 30 hours at, at 160 to 200 mile an hour gust mm-hmm. for 30 hours. I remember. One guy, yeah, one guy lit under his table there in Australia last week for 30 hours. And then he got up when the storm finally broke and went to his mom's house and she had done the same thing and survived it. He said, never, ever, ever seen anything like it. Nothing like that. Well, we don't, you know, you know, that story was not covered over here much at all. Well, I've been out in a hundred mile an hour winds, you know, and mm-hmm. on the ocean and mm-hmm. going up and trying to get to the bow was incredibly difficult. Mm-hmm. Just to try to pull yourself down to check the anchor and beach lines was incredibly difficult because of the wind. So what was 160 to a, which is confirmed 163 was confirmed at the local airport in that area where they were too. But we know for fact it was gusting much higher than that and speculations from forecasters was a couple of hundred miles per hour, but it would have right. hit harder than that. It didn't see any stories over here about it. I'm not saying there weren't any, but no, I didn't see no, any. It didn't. No, it didn't show up. I collected hundreds of videos mm-hmm. from the locals that were uploading it. I got nothing from CNN. I got nothing from MSNBC. <laughs> nothing from Fox. Well, that's all I got. One from Fox. And uh, it was shocking. Nothing from BBC. Right. These, these are... Um, you're talking... There was one guy there, 40 yachts, 42 yachts. All of them got uh, sunk. 
and he's been there generations, right? Uh, all of them sunk. Like, look what happened to Haiti uh, last year, where it hit 200 mile an hour sustained wind, and that place is still completely wrecked. It leveled, it, it limbed, it tore the pavement right off the road there. We've seen it in Fiji, we've seen it in New Mexico, or Mexico. It's almost like we've the jet stream is dropping down, although the jet stream is 600 miles an hour, and God We've forbid that happened. Anywhere on the planet, and the media goes, kind of reports on it. I scoop it up, and because I, I understand the value of it, and so I scoop it all up. But uh, it's what? Uh, we've never seen it on the planet before. This is Fukushima's, and this is not going to stop. This is only going to get worse. We're going to see winds getting much higher. That's right. And so, like, at some point uh, soon, this is really going to hit a big city. We see in China get slammed with 235 mile an hour winds late last year that was incredible they managed to hush that up like grabbed a whole folder on videos that showed up there was some like in one spot a half a billion trees were torn off tipped over wow. like wow this was incredible like big cities have a couple of million people in china where there was no you couldn't ride a bike anywhere let alone a car or something like that because trees limbed everywhere everywhere and these trees were there for like 100 years 150 years and mm -hmm. i mean the whole part of that country they buried it, but we got yep. the footage that showed up. Yep. And so I was taking the Chinese language on the video and, and re-looking for that stuff and then finding other people from those communities were in total shock at the damage and everything done in the lake. Right. Uh, and the death of the Pacific uh, is not going to go away. we got the glaciers are disappearing in many countries all of a sudden now starting to show up. Well, I've been looking for it and showing up in many countries where the glaciers are gone completely or about to disappear. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, what's going on? Nobody's really able to to articulate that. Hey, you don't suppose there's all that radiation for Fukushima. Uh, this is catastrophic because that's the glaciers are the lakes, the streams, the estuaries and the coastline regulates the temperatures and the estuaries, the fish, the trout, the, the frogs and everything else. Do you, once you take out that ecosystem, whoo yeah. I mean, it's literally a nightmare of unimaginable proportions to uh -huh. see the planet go silent. Uh -huh. I lived in that day after day where you wouldn't see a bird. You anchor all night long. There'd be no birds anywhere. You go and you go ashore each day to get a bath in the local rivers. And it was um, no spider webs. There was no birds hopping around on the branches, you know, these overhangs. It was really surreal. To the point of you, we left food. I mean, Cherry up there by Bella Bella. We left food on a table outside the tent uh -huh. for three days, raw meat, and no animals come by and stole it. We were gone off in the zodiac doing surveys, and you come back, it was still sitting there all night long, still sitting there all night long in the tent. And you would hear no, and the forest is right there. You're, you're right up on the water, and the forest right there, and still no animals, and no insects bothering us. That was really, it haunts me constantly. Uh, that experience. I don't think I'll ever recover from that because I'm not used to it. I'm used to <laughs> flies tearing you apart. I'm used to animals stealing everything you got. That's right. I'm used to places. Sure. Yeah, you're used to hiding it up high in a tree so the animals don't loot it when you're gone and all these precautions. Sometimes you got to leave someone behind to take care of the campground because <laughs> the animals will take it on you. And to see that, the whole coastline, the total, and to understand what's really happening through the media reports of the starvation of the animals. Sure. Yes. That's going to come, it's really going to come in everybody's face. Uh, it has already. We made sure of that by constantly keeping alive, Jeff. But uh, a war is not going to change it, right, is what I'm trying to say, I think, is a catastrophic... No, a war, a war is just to feed, feed the beast. That's just... That's what Syria was, yeah. They just make money. After. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a big distraction and a, and a real distraction. I was showing that drone footage from uh, Syria today, and it's just like the creepiest thing imaginable. Here's this community of a million people, mm -hmm. and they, every building is rubble. There's, there's nowhere to go back to. There's nothing there. There's, like your life is gone, your mm -hmm. graveyards are gone, mm -hmm. like all your, your family pictures, your heirlooms, uh, you know. If we done that to a modern day American Canadian city, you know, uh, every country on the planet would be donating billions of dollars because it was a catastrophic event. But it happens over there when we do it. I mean, right. we went into in Iraq and Afghanistan for 5.5 million rounds a month to get 10,000 Taliban. 5, 5. 5. We, we shot everything. <laughs> we leveled everything. 
Yeah. Readers, what the... And the kids that are doing it, I mean, they got to do what they're told or they get shot in the back of the head down there. They get yeah. fragged with a grenade or whatever the case may be. This misery machine. And it's just, it won't give it up. It won't go away. It won't... We, we keep sending our children to join and we, you know, we let our friends join it. We, we're not able to comprehend what's happening. We can only look in, in uh, reflection and understand there was a mistake sometimes. But we can't seem to look ahead and say, hey, this is stupid. After all this time, even with uh, the enormous amount we have available now at our fingertips, no other generation has ever been able to look at it. Uh, you know, we all know how terrible it is, but we, what? Let's go hit North Korea. Let's go hit where, what, these most impoverished places on the planet that live on a dollar a they day. They got at least six solid flashpoint venues for war. They could keep yeah. us just jerking around for years. They can't really feed up Palestine anymore. There's nothing left here. No, there's, there's, they're going to there's expunge. They're going to expunge all the people this year. Gaza will be vacated. They'll, right. they'll drive them out. Watch. That's the prophecy of the Bible, what you're looking at there, though. This is, they're, they're trying to fulfill the prophecy themselves mm -hmm. is what they're trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is totally staged. Uh, wicked, they're wicked people, what they're doing. And what the Japanese have done, and the nuclear industry in particular. You know, I just want to live long enough to see uh, them pay for what they've done. <laughs> now, I so hope that's, so. That's I, I'm not seeing many people held is. accountable anymore, Dana. I, I wish I was wrong, but I don't, I don't see it. They own the game, so, you know, if they have to, they'll throw a couple of their own out, let them swing in the wind to keep the rest safe and keep everybody looking the other direction. I just, I don't know. There's don't no know, accountability, they, not much. They can't hide the death of the Pacific? And, uh, oh, yes, they, they can. Not sure. much longer. I can't be done yet. Not with you. Not too many people. There's three, yeah, there's three million people, right? Depending upon that ocean. They've been doing I made a sure there's pretty amazing job so here. far, but uh, you're right, it's got to end. The, the ocean is end. dead. The biggest ocean in the world is dead. They found, uh, they found uh, cesium-137 in every ocean on the planet now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the numbers are terrifying. Do you know anybody then, eating fish anymore? You know, yeah. I can't even remember last time we ate fish. It's horrible. And so, like, you can't even trust fish from Atlantic. Or, from, like, you know, you just can't. No. It's, and so wicked because we already ingested so much. And we got to be smart. We got to utilize everything that's available. And, and we might come up with solutions. They might already have solutions. Lobsters and, and such. People eat lobster. They eat Way shrimp. up the food chain, yeah. People think that, oh, there's fish out there. Therefore, is no issue. It's literally the stupidest thing imaginable. But they're lulled into that world. True. And, yeah. You know, they, they, I can't blame them for rejecting it. I don't blame people really for attacking me and I never did in one sense I get upset about it and I, you know whatever but I don't I, I get where people are coming from but, but the, the professional ones they're trolls they know what they're doing that's different but the, the, the average person who doesn't understand and thinks I'm full of, of nonsense or thinks I you know oh he's not from Harvard or Yale or Berkeley or Stanford or something like that but I get those people I understand where they're coming from and I don't hold a grudge against them well you but, really can't the people, you know they just look it's not the people I'm talking no, understood. Yeah, I'm What's talking about point? the institutions, the, the, the journalists that could look it up and say, "Oh, you know, for 70 years I've been saying it's like a banana. It turns out it's not like a banana. How how is that not embarrassing and humiliating? See, well, it's not because that's the game. Who can sell us the lie the best? That's, that's what the right. job. Yeah, and they, that's why they get eight nine million dollars a year. The big shots in the cable, which is just conjectures, is commentary, is not media. Go read the study yourself, folks. Go look up the other narratives. Never conceive like, and I do that with everything. I look up all the narratives I can find, make up my own mind the best I can, right. in the hopes, right. And so that's why I had seven thousand lectures before Fukushima about nuclear. Well, that's what they do. They know they know the rules, and when you own the media and it comes at the average person twenty four seven from every possible media platform, what are they going to do? Yeah, like the way I see it, I think, is like I forgot how many times I've been privileged or blessed, whatever you want to call it, in every context of that. And, you know, I've never taken it for granted, but I've forgotten because I, you know, worked to position myself all my life into those spots where that's, that is the order of the day. 
And uh, I've always been grateful for everything. And But I had worked hard my entire life to do things, but I had always been grateful no matter how small it was. And I always seen it as a duty, right, to to make sure, you know, that I... Well, it's a, that, it's, a, it's a responsibility, it's a duty, it's also a privilege. You have right. the skills, you have the ability to communicate. You're a, you're a, a person who people listen to and so you're doing the right thing and that's what we're all like, supposed to do whatever it is let's do it to the best of our ability long before fukushima i've forgotten how many people i have pulled off the bottom of boats or off rocks or out of the water there and i go. can't possibly remember it I, that's the world i come from where you will give your life gladly so that they don't uh, suffer uh, without some hope right and it's that a, was it's the, a reflex it, in you because you, you they, you're 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 a you're what all of us ought to be. You're you're the guy who saves the other person, wants nothing from it, doesn't even hesitate to reach out. That's what you're trying no, to do with what you're no doing. No names now. are ne- no names are necessary. No names yeah. needed. No. No. I and, totally no, understand. And it's, it's, you know, like I gave away shoes to people that we rescued and clothing for them, and so happy, um, just so proud of it. Sure. But that's something you don't brag about. It's not something you want to talk about. It's no, something that, of course not. There's an incredible amount of emotions attached to it. Right. And it's something that, that yeah, it's something that uh, is not something you can just go pick up and do. It's something that has to happen. It's the, it's the road you got to walk, and it's the test of a lifetime. You know, I've dropped people off in islands. Uh, I'll blow my own horn. I dropped people off in islands to go rescue other people because it's too dangerous. And I probably said it before, you know, where they had families uh-huh. and they couldn't deal with it. I've seen people on the deck sliding back and forth to deck talking to Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, please get me off this boat and I'll never get on the ocean again. And literally <laughs> just wash them back and forth on the deck and you got to grab them, bring them inside uh-huh. and put them in a corner and keep your eye on them because they've lost it. Yes. I mean, totally lost Sounds, it. I've seen yeah. that several times. Yeah. And so you don't, like, you have this compassion, I guess. Uh, but that... That's something that's built into you. And this is what I see when I see all these animals and all these headlines, all these stories and all these people, all these comments and the things like you and Yoshi over the years. And it's just all the people that have spoken out honestly and objectively about this and done the best they could. Not that they're always right. I'm we never can't do right. any more than that. We just right. can't do right. it. If we had but control of the, the mainstream media for even 24 hours, what we could do. Oh. Yeah. Change the world. And that's what we got to do. We got to end war, end the misery machine, get rid of the genome. They're getting ready to ramp it up again. These idiots. No, we're, we're, we're taking it over. That's I'm how I feel. You. Yeah. I feel that's true. I don't know. Got to keep going. Thank you, Dana. As always, yeah, you, for everything you, you've done. Thank you, Jeff. Hugs for everybody. Thanks okay. a lot, Todd. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. Talk to you soon. Mr. Dana Durnford. And, uh, He has done a lot. All right. Yoshi sends his best, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, 21 hours. Got a good program tomorrow night, as always, and hope you'll be uh, able to join us. Talk soon.